All right, hallelujah. Praise you for another opportunity to come together and be his name through Yahushua HaMashiach to examine his account, the things that he went through, the things that he taught, the situations at hand, so we can start to see and learn for ourselves what these words are speaking to us. So this morning, Brother J.G., if you will, we're going to begin looking at this word in Luke 8, verses 1. I'm going to go ahead and share this. If you will, brother. Hallelujah. Uh, this is Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went through throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of Elohim. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Harad Stewart, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. What you see there, brother, that, that sticks out to you? Well, I, I think that, you know, when we talk about Mary, it's, it's pretty, um, it, it's one of those things, I, I guess, in, in life today, you know, thinking about what she was going through, you know, and, and what do we see when we see people that are going and having, it says seven uh, devils in this scripture, um, and G1140, according to the Strongs, I want to see what that one said, but I was just thinking about it like in today, like what we would see from somebody who has seven devils and are seven demons in them that, um, cause we know that her story, once we read the scripture, you know, the rest of the manuscript are the scriptures, then you'll see that how, how she was so excited and, and how she followed him um, after she was healed. And, it was just something with that, the power of of what she had gone through in comparison to somebody else who maybe may have not been dealing with that. Um, and just there's a thankfulness in that. I think we were reading some scriptures on that and I had to find something that I had. There was a verse that connected with that. Um, I think we read last week um, just talking about who would be more uh, thankful. And we've seen her always at his feet. And I, I believe because she was that much thankful. Um, so I just want to share that. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Yeah, this portion, uh, I, I wanted us to look at this because there's something, you know, when, you, when you're in the religious world, if you will, in churches or even in the synagogues, we see that they're, the way they look at women and, and how they are in the servitude of the kingdom and their place and position. And I find it very interesting since we began this study and all the way up to here where we see this Miriam uh, of Migdal. Uh, once, once she comes into this contact and we see her in other portions of scripture that, that word it the very same way that, you know, she was with people, she was following along, she was watching, she was observing and she, at this point, after after this moment in time, that's where she began to follow him. But we see that she's here, and she was set free from seven evil spirits, uh, demons, devils, whatever you want to call it. I think the Strong's even puts in their G-O-D, you know, in some senses. You know, we know that this is not of Yahuwah. And we know that these things through other uh, scriptural uh, accounts of people that are uh, have these these spirits in them, how they control them. So you can almost kind of put your mindset here where you see this woman, and, and she's only one of many women, according to it says certain women here, which have been healed of evil ruachs and infirmities. So let's not talk about just one, but one of them was, was Miriam. And we see that she are, is in other accounts, even all the way down after the, the crucifixion. Uh, of the Mashiach, 
we see that she was one of the first that, that, that was the witness and was to go to tell the other 12, which we see here, to go share what she's seen and witnessed. You know, we see that Yahuwah, Yahusha, sees men and women as valuable. Doesn't matter which, which sexual orientation you are. Because when we get into the into the uh, Shemayim, it's not going to be male and female. We're not, it's not going to be seen in that way. And I think that he sees us, uh, even though we are in the flesh, but in a spiritual sense, he still sees us because we have a love for him, whether you're a male or you're a female, a love for him. And that's what is that he sees here is the heart of his people. And these women really appreciate they cherish Yahusha for what he is doing and what he's doing for others and how he set them free this is a bondage that he set them free from and there's a reason that he wants to include this that they were following along they were walking with him and the 12 disciples and we see this in other accounts too so it's interesting I'm going to go to some of those other accounts just to share with you some of the other verses that we have that, uh, that speak of this, you know, in, in different situations that we see this that are very common in the, in the words of the way that they, well, we see this in Matthew 27, 55, and many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Yahusha from Galilee to minister to him. We see it, uh, the, this continues in, in to, uh, verse 56 of Matthew 27. Among them were here, Miriam uh, uh, Magdalene, a few of Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. We see it in Mark 15, 40 and 41. And there were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, mother, uh, Mary, the mother of James, the younger of, uh, of the jo Josephs and the Solom uh, Solomon. These women had followed Yahusha and ministered to him while he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up from Jerusalem with him. We see these accounts of these that people that have been affected by Yahusha, male and female alike. But we're, there's a special emphasis here that I wanted us to take a look at because we're gonna see how the role of, of a woman and the male is in, 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 in the kingdom. We're gonna see that we're all, you know, equally attacked, if you will, by the enemy. So I wanna get your views on what you see in this section and what is it speaking in an overall sense so that we can see how this continues in our study today as we look at this. Brother Ra, if you will, uh, your thoughts on this first section of scripture? What is it that you see, brother? <clears throat> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, brother. Yeah, I'm still JP's phrase. This is an interesting portion of scripture right here. <laughs> nah, but um, I think um, it is is most certainly bringing light to um you know, what we are called to do. You know, these these women, there's an emphasis on um, <clears throat> them understanding and recognizing how they were delivered. You know, it's no different than Yahuwah constantly reminding <clears throat> the nation, you know, over and over again, how they were delivered from Egypt. Um, and, and, the, and the purpose of it, it causes you to do something. You know, if you are truly delivered, it causes you to do something, you know, versus not doing anything, you know. These women were called to serve. And, 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 and the interesting thing about it to me mostly is the different difference, differences in the women. Um, because you, you have, you know, Mary Magdalene who, you know, as you uh, aforementioned, um, and, what, and what she becomes, <clears throat> excuse me, what she becomes to Yahushua. 
and how she's always around and how she was the first to see him risen, you know. Um, but but then there's a, a mixture of, of other women. You have you know, women of stature. You know, you have Chusa, the wife of Herod Stewart. Um, Susanna, you know, these are women of, of, of great wealth that were able to, to help and give the needs um, that he needed. And, and I'm sure his disciples need, you know, and it goes to show how the service of those that are around ministry are necessary. Like, you know, everyone isn't called to do the same thing. Everyone isn't called to teach. Everyone isn't called to pray. Everyone isn't called to give. Um, although we are to do those things, there is a special emphasis on the things that we are most certainly called to do. We have to seek those things out and we have to do them with excellence. You know, these women were giving, giving, givers. These women were serving. Um, you know, they were making sure um, that, that he had what he needed. You know, they were giving of themselves and of their possessions. You know, this is what scripture talks about. This is what happened in the book of Acts. You know, all things were made common specifically to those that didn't have. All of those came to Jerusalem. They turned their lives over to Yah. They had nothing. They left their possessions. All of those around them had, they shared with those that didn't. These women are ministering to him in exactly what they needed. And the emphasis is on, they were compelled by their deliverance, right? That's the focus. And we are to do the same things. We are to constantly be looking for where Yah wants to use us in ministry. We're not, we're not called to be spectators. You know, we're not called to just sit around and just take it all in. There are times where we do that, as we saw last week, <clears throat> but there are times to serve. And we have to be willing to do that. And I think that's, that's a lot of what's going on here at the same time. So just wanted to share that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you bring it home uh, about what they're doing there. You know, with what these women and the substance that they gave. You know, that word there that uh, that they ministered unto him of their substance. That's their possessions. Like you said, you know, they're giving of themselves what they have uh, towards him. And um, like you said, the the twelve they, they walk with him. It was like you know. I see this nurturing uh, in women, this, this nurturing tendency. And I, and I'm thinking that, you know, once, once, you know, you uh, are set free as, as this, as these women were from their bondages of these, these evil spirits uh, the, and infirmities, it says. So, you know, there's a thankfulness and a gratefulness there that attaches you to that one that sets you free. You know, even in our case, it's the same thing. Yahushua today has done this for us, of uh, setting us free from our evil spirits, our infirmities. And if you haven't, then you can be. Um, but we see here that once it happens, there's something that happens to that. And we're seeing the example of the women here, of their hearts and, and, and how they are now walking with Yahushua and, and, and his disciples and, and ministering unto them. That word ministering that we're looking there is to be an attendant, that is to wait upon, you know, or to even to host a friend or a teacher. So technically it's to act as, as a believer, you know, um, minister unto or to serve, you know, and, and interestingly enough, it's also used in the office of a deacon, Brother JP. So, you know, when we're looking at the, the, these different words and, and what they're what they're saying to us, you know, so we can start to see how and why this is in scripture and what is it that it's really outlaying for us here. And I think you 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 uh, condensed it very well, Brother Rod. Um, anybody else have anything that they see in this section before we move on? If not, we're going to go ahead and move on to Matthew uh, twelve. Verse 22, and I uh, believe we're going to go ahead and just, uh, we'll take this in some chunks. So it's going, we're going to go all the way down to 37, Brother JP. 
Let me uh, get this over here so I can share it. So, oh, we got yeah. hands up before we move on. Yeah, your brother T.O. had a question. Yeah, I, I see that now. Brother T.O., and then I'm going to come to you, J.D., and then Brother Brian. Yes. Um, what I got from that passage, basically some of the same things that Brother J.P. and uh, <laughs> Brother Ron got. got um but the, the thing that stuck out to me most is uh, when it was talking about Mary and Magdalene um, was delivered from seven devils. And I'm like, as much as I've been in the scripture, like all my life, I don't recall ever seeing that. <laughs> so, uh, so that got me. And then it, it um, as Brother JT, uh, JP alluded to, um, it gave me an understanding of uh, how deep her love was for him. Like, like you said on the scriptures that um, we were looking at last week, it's, it talked about whoever is forgiven of much, um, uh, how deep their love would be. And uh, that's a paraphrase, of course, but um, so it just stuck out, uh, it, that really stuck out to me. And then also it says that, um, and it came to pass that afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching, um, preaching and showing the good news of the kingdom of Elohim. And then I, it hit me, he is the good news of the kingdom. Um, so he's going around with his cell phone full display. So uh, that's what I got from that. Thank you. Well, he, he is the good news, but he was also teaching, you know, really he's, he's helping us understand the Torah, just speaking about him. You know, he, and he's teaching about that good news of that, 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 prophecies of, of, the, of the Torah being fulfilled in him and that he's this promised one that we're going to see as we continue digging into these sections of scripture. Uh, it starts to get real good here in a minute. So uh, hold on. It's already, it's just getting started real good already. Brother J.D., what you got? Yeah, hello, y'all. <clears throat> just wanted to, you know, add to, you know, one of the women, uh, Joanna, the wife, it says of Kuza Harad Stewart, um, I don't know, it was just, you know, just reading that and seeing that I was looking at that word steward and I thought it would be a, a more used word, but it was only used three times. Um, as somebody it says, a commissioner or a guardian. Um, so it's just kind of interesting just to see how Yahushua, when he heals, and, and it's something that, you know, it still goes on today that there's no, you know, not only is it, no man and women but it's also different walks of life or different you know because we we see hurrah and well there was three, i think it was like three hurrahs because it's just a title but but we know that they weren't i wouldn't say living uh, according to torah you know and and so but he healed it says that he healed the wife of hurrah Stewart. so this this man, uh, Harad Stewart, was somebody who played a a, a role in in the area of that time. Um, on the opposite end of of what I would say again, you know, walking in Torah, but his wife was healed, and it's just something interesting. You know, you know, she's not mentioned very many, much times, but just seeing somebody in that situation and their wife is healed because it seems like a person like Harad Stewart would be you know, have a, a status. And so, um, you know, praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Yes, it, it really does uh, bear witness to, it doesn't really matter who you are to Yahushua, you know. Well, you know, there was a reason that he healed these women, uh, that they were being spoken of intentionally here. And, you know, like you said, there are only a few times in scripture that, that, that she's mentioned, but we can see the status of, of who, you know, who she belongs to, you know, as far as a, a wife. You would think that that would affect him even, you know, in his understanding of that, that, that his wife has been, been transformed or has been set free. You would almost want to put this guy, you would think he would be put into a place of stature in that, in that sense, you know. Especially, you know, it's, you know, she's been dealing with these issues. I'm sure he was aware and and and, and seeing the witness of it. It's interesting that we don't hear how he would have stepped up 
in that behalf, you know, or they would have supported Yahushua himself. You know, usually a, a husband usually is there, you know, hey, something like that was to happen to you, brother Rod, whether you see Sister June is affected in a positive way, that I'm sure that would move you and stir you too. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I think I think well the purpose I think the purpose that is mentioned is not so much what what the husband did because of what happened. But it it, it it's it's mentioned to show that that news of the Messiah, news of Yahushua had reached Herod's palace. Remember, if we remember later, Herod is, you know, he's on the fence and he's like, I see no wrong in this man. He erred on the side of the caution and went with the Pharisees and made his decision kind of weakly anyway, but he was affected by the truth that he saw in Messiah. But the point of, you know, you know, them mentioning Herod's steward's wife was serving and gave of her substance of her possessions, you know, it just goes to show how all points are necessary in ministry, different walks of life, different people. The father will use men and women of wealth. He'll use men and women of industry. He'll use men and women of agriculture to help the process in moving his ministry forward. You know, a lot of times we like, you know, we'll focus on, you know, being poor, we're focus on giving things away, but sometimes the Father gives you things as resources to help the ministry, and we have to recognize that all of those things are necessary. Yahushua was put in a borrowed tomb by a rich man. Like these things are necessary. You know, money here is used as a resource. Wealth here is used as a resource to serve. Yeah, and we see throughout scripture, it's not to focus on the things, but the focus on Yah allows the things to help his people. And I think we have to make sure that we see that because sometimes that can be pushed away and ignored or even covered up to say that all of these things aren't necessary when Yah uses them to help his people. So this is a good example because, and that's what I was kind of mentioning when I said, he uses women from different walks of life in this passage to show that how they were used to minister to Messiah, even the wife of a steward in Herod's home. So um, we have to see how far reaching the word of Messiah and the words of Messiah being Yahuwah's words reached and are continuing to reach. It doesn't matter where you are, or who you are, you know. If you meet Messiah, you will change. Your life will change. Everything that you have, everything that he has given you will be used for the kingdom because that's the way the heart moves when you trust and believe in him. Period. End of sentence. Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, you know, these are things, examples that we just read over sometimes and don't really ponder on. Why are they even written in the scriptures? Well, there's no coincidences. There's no, you know, haphazardness to it. When when things are there, they're there to teach us something. Even something so simple as, you know, mentioning these women. Well, there's a reason that he that he's trying to show us, and and I think we're digging into it pretty good here, uh, of why and how this reaches us and how Yahuwah uh, uh, allows these things to be used, you know, and affect people. Brother Brian. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, the, the other brother, I don't think it was, I think it was TL, was talking about earlier. Uh, yeah, because I never, I don't remember ever reading about Mary Magdalene. I thought, she, I, I thought she was the one that was caught in adultery. Uh, and they was about to stone her, and then Yahushua was like, "You know, sin cast the first stone." Uh, but I look back at that passage, and it doesn't even mention her name; just says "woman." It was a woman caught in adultery, so I was like, "Maybe I'm tripping or something." I'm, I'm assuming that was her, and maybe not even been her. I don't know. But um, 
but uh but yeah i was thinking about um it was interesting in galatians uh what shaul uh what shaul said about about the uh, uh it's in uh, galatians uh 325 says but after ramona has come we are no longer under a schoolmaster for ye are all the children of yah by mona and yahusha hamashiach for as many of you are immersed into yahusha having put um have put on yahusha th there is neither jew or yahudim or greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for y'all one in yahusha and uh yeah it, it's interesting that um yeah like what y'all were saying about like we have roles to play you know every we're, we're members of one one body so we have different functions and uh and what's interesting about the, uh, I remember it was a while back we were talking about the Holy Spirit or the Ruach, and if it was uh, at the time if it was male or female or whatever like that, and oh, uh, uh, and it was interesting because uh, what I took away from that discussion was that 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 Yah in his like his when he created mankind, it reflected his image. So the, the male and the female has attributes of the most high. And uh, and what I saw was that it was just like, what I took away was that that the male, the, the authority and the, the authority and the uh, the power is in is in the is is in the male. And it's like the head of the woman is is uh in the marriage is the, the husband. As Yahusha is the head of the called the uh, set apart assembly, so the authority is in the male. So, like when we see, the, like, uh, like I, I remember, uh, I think I asked Jody Yale uh, uh, during that discussion. It was talking about, well, why don't we ever see like female angels or anything like that? Is because I think he he was saying at the time is like that's where the authority is in the is in the in the masculine in the male outside so it's like when I mean, they present themselves it's always going to be in that form of like more masculine because that's that, that's the authority and when we look at the female attribute or the female side it's like i see that as the the um the creative the creative like the uh the creative side how like females they they produce children and everything you look at creation um the, it's, it, it's everywhere where you cre uh, it's like the, the feminine is more of the creative force um, in, the, in, the, in this world. And it's always interesting um, when you look back in Genesis, it's like when he it says this Ruach was hovering over the waters. And when he spoke, that the spirit basically gave the life, gave the, had that creative force uh, to produce what the head said. Uh, and, um, and so it's, uh, kind of that's what was going over in my mind as we were talking just thinking back on that discussion and how like you have that creative force which is like the the what i see as the the feminine side and then you have the power the authority the masculine side and how that that comes together in a marriage uh and that that comes together uh and that's what yahoo is it reflects it, uh it, it, man kind of reflects both of those attributes the creative and the the power and the authority um, so that's kind of like what I was thinking there. So um, that's, yeah, yeah, that's it though, but shalom. Hello, you brother. You know, I can, uh, I, I was following along with what you're, what you're, what you were saying. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people that say that the, you know, whether there's a female aspect uh, to the Ruach, you know, also there's a neutral, you know, aspect you know, where it's neither or, it's just because that, those are human terms, if you will, male and female, you know. I believe when we get into a spiritual form, as uh, was read by Brother J.D., you know, it's not going to be neither male or female, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a manifested higher level of a being that resides within us, of course. Uh, our spiritual ruach, our spiritual being is within us. But when you're looking at Yahuwah and when he says, let us make man and in our image, you know, of course, he's talking male and female, the attributes, you know, the creative side, whether that's, you know, we all have our role. Women have their roles in, in creation and, 
and and in the family and and, their, and what they're used for, and the male is as well. And that's that's why Yahuwah set up the structure the way he did the pattern. He's telling us how things in the order of things, so things are supposed to work in a certain order, you know, for things to work properly. And when we get out of order in those things, then we see th the wheels come off, if you will. But in this sense, I, you know, I'm looking at how is it, you know, why is it that we're being directed to look towards these women and, and, and what is their roles in, in, within the kingdom? Because they were used for that, whole, you know, they were comforting, they were serving Yahusha, you know, uh, they were doing things that the men weren't doing. Because it's in your nature as a woman to do certain things that men nature doesn't cause us to do, you know. So I think those are the things that Yahuwah has put into women that versus a man and vice versa. So that we fulfill those roles that, that he's created us to fulfill in our lives, you know, the, in our homes and all, whatever the structure might be, even of the assembly, you know. Um, but with that being said, we're all... Uh, capable of being used by the Ruach, whether male or female. You know, he doesn't distinguish. He's looking at those that are, have a heart to serve him, those that have a heart to, to pursue him and to live their lives accordingly. You know, we're his children. Hallelujah. Sister yeah, Robbie, um, you got something, yeah. Brother Robbie, before I go to Sister Robbie? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to to make sure we're, we're understanding, you know, what's going on here in regards to also order that he has. And I think you touched on it. Brian did a really good job of talking about the marriage. And I think that it's it's very important to understand that there's always order. There's always a hierarchy. You know, there's always the father, son, the Ruach. There's always, you know, Yahushua, man, woman. Um, and it's the way he set it up. You know, now there are attributes um, that are necessary from both the male and the female, you know? And I think that's one of the reasons that you know we're drawn to to these women to see what they are doing. I think in one passage we read maybe a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, this woman did these things and you, you didn't. Like you didn't do these things. These are the things that a woman thinks about when you when you think of ministry. You know, there are certain aspects of, you know, when we put a feast together, there's certain things that I'm that I'm concerned about, you know, on the feast, you know, who's teaching what is the study going to be about? What time is the study going to be? You know, I'm not thinking about the food, what the kids are going to have, what the activities are going to be, you know, where are we going to do this? All of these things, you know, and, and sometimes it, it, a, a woman comes up with the necessary um, uh, remedies for in, in their function, you know, and I think that we always have to understand that we have a function and we have a way that we operate within the realm of order of the way that he set things up um, and, 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 and not to supersede that order or to reconstruct that order. And I think what we see in the world is there are deficiencies in what's supposed to be ordered or, or in order and it's out of order. <laughs> That's why you see you know, things that are out of order. You see women leading the home, you see women leading the, 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 the fellowships because there's a lack of male participation, there's a lack of male leadership. So a woman is going to automatically do it. That's why in Ephesians 5, he instructs the woman to respect her husband because there is a level uh, that a woman can get to where she won't respect. And that's the tendency. He tells the man to love. He doesn't tell the woman to love because the woman loves naturally the man has to learn how to love and give himself up as Yahushua did. There's a, there's a reason those things are pointed out in those passages. Um, and, and when it comes to the function of people, the function of, of, of the gifts that he gives us and the way that we operate, he wants to illuminate those things. And in scripture, it's not by accident that he's showing these women. These women are operating the way they're supposed to operate and giving what they're supposed to give to, to draw out the necessity of, of what it takes or what it means to live in accordance to what scripture tells us to do. You know, when you are delivered, there is an action that is necessary that you are supposed to do because of it, you know, and we can't 
minimize what somebody else does and think that what we do is better than what they're doing. You know, there's a purpose for that. There's a, a, a time and a place for that. And scripture is always going to pull that out, you know, so I um, just wanted to kind of share those things as well. So we have a clear, well-rounded idea of what scripture is saying in regards to you know, gender and function and attributes and all of those things. So, praise you. Good job, brother. Right on the, right on the head of it. Sister Robbie, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Yes, I just wanted to uh, add a couple of points about Mary Magdalene. I don't know if it's gonna be brought out or not in Matthew, I'm sorry. I apologize, I haven't had a chance to read ahead of time. I just wanted to mention that Mary Magdalene, she was in that function of being able to participate in receiving the Ruach HaKadosh in the upper room, like they have the two of 120. She was there along with Yahusha's earthly mother. She was there as well. So it showed that the father has functionalities and roles for all of us, but then like what you were bringing out, he sees us as beings. He doesn't only see us as men or women, but as a higher level of, of beings. That's why it was both men and women in the upper room receiving the Ruach HaKadosh. So that's it. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you for bringing out a few more points about her. Um, it's helpful for us to see. So thank you again, sister. Sister uh, the Silva family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Sorry about the little humming in the background there, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I think it was already brought out, but I just wanted to highlight it a little bit more because there are some um, brothers that are struggling with understanding the order and what the purpose of the order is. Not so much saying um, anyone here is, but I've heard some doctrine by brothers, um, you know, really belittling women and really belittling um, the function of women um, because women do have a specific function and they do have a specific order. That's not what I am highlighting. I'm highlighting that some brothers are um, establishing or trying to establish the kingdom based off the current order. And the only purpose for the current order is to teach order, if I can say it like that, is to teach the order of Yah. Um, subjection, humility. But as we know in Matthew 23 and 30, because a lot of them are highlighting just the order of marriage. The purpose of the marriage is to, is to show the mystery of Messiah. So it says in the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Instead, they will be like the angels in the Shemaim. And that just is referring to function and humility to Yahuwah. Um, the order that he is currently established with the male and the female is to show that, is to highlight that, is to show the beauty of that. But it it will not remain because scripture is clear that it, it won't. But the danger with some of the brothers with that, um, I had one in particular who was saying that this is how the kingdom is gonna be established in the future. And I was like, did he read the scriptures? Because that's, it's not what y'all is using to establish in the future. He's allowing it to go on now. And in a way, I get it. But that's not what the function is about. It's about understanding Yah and how we all should operate under his authority, how we all should be humble to him, how we all should be subject to him, esteeming him and loving him. That is the whole purpose of it. And I think others on the line really brought it out, especially Brother Rod when he was speaking um, just a minute ago with Yahuwah showing the men that, showing the function of the women, showing, you know, you didn't do that, but she did that. And it wasn't a put down. It was just, again, showing functionality, showing the purpose of the kingdom. I need you all to function as I have created you to function and everybody has a function. There's no one that doesn't have one. There's not one that's greater than the other. I just need you all to function. I don't need you to be fighting with each other, putting each other down. I need you to function and understand the humility aspect of your function. Um, so I just wanted to bring it out and highlight it because 
I'm grateful for where we are, but I'm also looking forward to the future. And, and one other note to say, I know people who are so um, adorned with their mate, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be, so don't take this the wrong way, but just the thought of in another, in, in, in the resurrection, there will be no marriage and giving in marriage. I've heard some people say, oh, well, that's gonna be hard for me. And I'm like, wow, then you need to start praying now <laughs> so you can get that right because we can't have an idol above Yahuwah. I'm not saying you don't love your mate, but you can't make an idol above him. Um, and I know there are people who currently struggle with that. Not a put down in any way, it's just, understand the function you should appreciate your mate definitely love your mate definitely but nobody can come before yahuwah um and i do see that in, in past passages of scripture people have made idols out of their mate both male and female and so that again um interferes with the purpose of your function um in all things we must sustain yah hallelujah Hallelujah. Well said, you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think we're seeing the gist of it, you know, I mean, Yahuwah created us, he gave us the gifts, he functions through us equally, I mean, you know, he's got a role, and he needs uh, somebody to step up, usually uh, uh, no, re you know, no disrespect to guys, but women seem to always be the ones to jump up and get stuff done quicker than dudes do, just in my opinion, but, you know, not saying that guys don't, you know, get a message from you and they don't jump right on it. But, you know, there's a, there's a role, there's a, there's a, there's something that's in a woman that a man don't have, you know, and, and sometimes they'll just go ahead and do things that servant nature that's in them, you know, the care for, you know, those that they love, and, you know, those around them. So, you know, you is good that way. He knows how to make us. So, and what we need, but Ryan, uh, yeah, yeah, just one last point. I was listening to what Brother Rob was saying about the, uh, uh, and it's sort of, it's basically what I was seeing too there from that study of uh, how the man and the, the male and the female make up our attributes of who Yah is, who Yahusha is. Um, and one example that I like to go to is in Matthew 23, uh, 37. It says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that, that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Now, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not? And here we see this is like a, a, a more of a, a female, a, a nurturing attribute. And so, like, like from that study we did about the holy, the ruach, the Holy Spirit. Um, I was just like seeing that it's like Yah is all these things. It's not that he's a male, he's a female. These things are just these are the male and the female are actually are characteristics that are both are encompassing in the most high. And we see this in like through the uh throughout scripture where he provides, he provides uh, in the wilderness, he provides all their needs, the food, the water. These are like the the, the nurturing, like that the mother like for her children and stuff. And these are, and we see in this verse how there is a nurturing side to, 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 to Yah, to Yahusha. And then there's that, there's also the authority side. So that in the, in the Ruach, these things are all encompassing and, and, um, and there's no separation. And the, I believe the main reason why we have the separation here in the natural is for the purposes of procreation. Uh, other than that, in the in the spirit, like in the ruach, there's no there's no separation because it's just there's no need for there's no there's, there's no procreation in the in the ruach. So it's like you so the the beings, the the spiritual beings are have all of these characteristics wrapped up. It's like uh this may sound weird, but I I, I believe I was thinking about Adam before Eve was taken out of him. Was it was it was he he I, like it was interesting because it's like did he already have all that in him like the nurturing the 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 authority the nurturing of the the, the woman and her attributes was that already all in him before he was taken out of him and that's just the thought that 
that I had, because that's what we see in the in the spirit. They have all those things wrapped up in one, um, in in the Most High, in Yahusha, and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to, uh, in the interest of thoroughness, make it clear that um, <laughs> that Yahusha and Yahuwah they have both of these these uh, they manifest both of these uh, characteristics of the male and the female. Um, and we, uh, that's what I see throughout scripture and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'll leave you. So. you know, that's an interesting thought, brother Brian, never really thought about that before. I mean, would, uh, Adam have both, both, the, the, all that in him. And since he, you know, he took the removed the, the female from Adam. I, that's a good question. I never thought about that brother Rob. Yeah. I, I think I, not only do I think that's true, I think it still exists because um, you see that play out in single parent homes. Uh, I'm talking about where there is no husband or there is no wife. You'll automatically see the wife, you know, take on masculine, you know, attributes to her children, specifically to her sons. Um, you'll see her be the the den mother, you know, to 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 other other kids. You also see um, her protect her kids in a way. Um, that a man might not that a woman won't do that because a woman still does that she's she's the mother bear but and you'll see that same nurturing in the single fathers you'll see them becoming both things the disciplinary and the nurturer and having them a, a more of a handle where when you have the husband and the wife you might see <clears throat> one defer to the other in those particular roles where the mother might be the nurture and the father handle all the discipline, you know, and vice versa, do the teaching, you know, teach the child, you know, all of those things and how they do it as a couple and as a family in the way it was set up. But those same attributes still exist within the man and the woman. And you see them when there is dysfunction, you see those things come out. You see those things come out right before your eyes. So I just wanted to kind of share that in a practical since that's interesting <laughs> you know you, you like what you said you know you do see that that come out of us you know uh what is necessary interesting interesting thoughts i didn't really think about these things going into the study but uh i guess that's that's where we go brother jd sister leticia Shalom, shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. I uh, I just wanted to just share with some thoughts. And brother um, Rod had brought this out as he with a with a serving to serve. And um, what I wanted to say was um, I it was really interesting to me because all of these it seems like all of these women that you know like it was mentioned they come from different economic you know levels uh with different struggles and and here they all are and they're serving yahusha with or they're ministering unto him with their substances and it kind of reminded me a little bit of what well, kind of reminded me of when i was uh earlier like when i was in my christian walk it was i would come to at that time i would call him god i would come to yahuwah and ask for things like for him to do things for me and as I came and as I left that walk and came into this, you know, just the set apart walk, it became more of what can I do for you? How can I serve you? And I wanted to read um, John 12, 26. And it says, if any man serve, wait upon, minister unto me. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there, there shall also my secret my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor and i believe like for me like this is this is a beautiful section because it just really brings to me and it, it really it really helps me to understand like the importance of us serving yahusha you know serving our heavenly father you know ministering unto him um i'm not sure um when it, in verse three, what their substances were, but um, the way I see it is how can, it just is helping me to understand and to really appreciate that we we are called to serve him, you know, and with 
their gifts that he's given us or, you know, just by being a light unto others. But I just wanted to bring that out and um, because I think it, it just really spoke to me. So that's it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Who would have thought that uh, these few lines here would have taken this much uh, discussion? But there's a lot of different directions this has gone this morning. Brother Charles, I'm sure you got us going in another direction. What's up, brother? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Uh, I'm not trying to be the swine amongst the group. I just want to um, ask a question. Like, what, what would... What, what would this conversation go and how would you explain this to transgender people and, you know, homosexuals or whatever? Because the way they're going to perceive it, you know, they're going to take it a whole nother way. Like, oh, see, I can be male or female or whatever. And you can't tell me nothing. You know, I'm, you get what I'm saying? So I, I'm just trying to see how would you be explain this to them using that, um, using what everybody was saying about the law. Praise God. Well, first of all, I don't think it has anything to do with our sexual orientation, our, you know, who we're attracted to or not. That's not right, right, with, right, right. You know, this has something to do with whether you're gay or straight. You know, I would say if you're in walking in that in that in that side of walking being gay, you're gonna you're not gonna be in that position. I don't think that you're going to find there's going to be a there's got to be some kind of a, a, a repentance uh, a, a change of direction that would have to take place within that for for them to actually be able to serve and maybe i'm wrong in that sense maybe their hearts would be and then the transformation would took place but either way we know that scripture speaks against that as being a lifestyle even though that's not what this is talking about here you know this this is talking us that we see who, who, who the servants are, just like Brother Rod said, even when they were with the disciples, this woman, and this was last week, she's the one that came in and served them, served Yahushua. She did the things that none of them did. And they were walking, they were his disciples, they were close to him. It was because of her heart, because probably a lot of it has to do with a woman. You know, a woman is that way where they're more vulnerable in that sense. They 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 are able to see these things and you know, and, and it broke her down in that sense. And you see the heart of, of her in that moment. We see the hearts of these women here too, because their hearts were changed. They were transformed. They, they're, they're following and be, they're following from a distance because that was the culture of the day. But, you know, they were there also in the midst of it serving, you know, doing the thing. So, you know, different places, different roles, different times, they were, they were fitting within that. But I think the regard of how you communicate this, just what we talked about, you know, it's about the, the, the servanthood of, a, of, of the heart of a, of a woman, you know, that compassion is, uh, we see the disciples there walking with them, but we see the women are being pointed out here. And that's why we're looking at this discussion, you know, this morning, I didn't think it was gonna take this much time, but you know, that's how it rolls when you know things start flowing and we get insight on these things but i think that the thing that we need to really examine is there's a reason that this is being pointed out to us how they are what they're doing you know so that we can take that example so no matter who you're talking to wherever their place is uh, in their in their lives it's not even a, uh, any more than your commitment to serving you or Yahusha in this sense, almost like Sister Leticia said, you know, she is a, it's showing her a different level of how we can serve Yahusha and how when when we're intimate with him in a relationship, as we are walking, you're, you're going to want to serve. And I'm, I'm not even thinking that men in this sense, you know, now that I'm seeing it, how this discussion is going, the hearts of the men are also uh, looking at, but they're looking at it from a different point of view, if you will. Along, but and I think that's how Yahuwah does things. Why He created us the way He did. So, if we all see things the same way and from the same point of view, I'm talking about men and women here. You would, you everybody would have the same view, and there would be things that would be missed. Just like you said, Brother Rod. There's things that you, men we think about. These are important to us. Guess what? The women fill in the other stuff that we forget. You know. They pick up the slack where the men don't aren't quite as detail oriented, if you will. 
So that's all I really say. Brother Rod, you wanted to respond to that before we move on? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Charles raises a good question because I don't think that he was specifically talking about the passage. He was talking about the idea of male and female attributes residing in us, you know, everyone. Um, I think that's more to what he's talking about because it lends to, you know, their behavior, you know, um, because it's, it's behavior uh, that they're exhibiting now is a complex issue because the behavior has different reasons. You know, some some is based upon abuse and abuse happening to a, a young girl or young boy and them being confused about gender and what their behavior should be. Those things have to be, you know, sorted out. Um, but ultimately, um, scripture doesn't support that idea. Now, even in those relationships, the homosexual relationships, <laughs> there's still a top and a bottom. There's one that takes on the male attributes and the female attributes in both the men and the women. So that's something to consider. Even that, <laughs> you know, seeks to have order within its disorder. Um, but that's, you know, that topic that idea is a complex topic that i believe the church and the uh the, the assemblies have failed to address properly and and it's to their detriment you know that we need to address that issue the right way you know not with signs and you know um condemnation um but but getting them to understand and meet messiah who changes the hearts and mind of men um and i want to go to the hands. I tell you what, I, before you go to the next passage, Sister Leticia brought out something and in, in just understanding what the words meant. So I wanted to read those three verses in the Greek translation uh, before you go to the next passage, but um, go to uh, Sister Diane and I think someone else had their hand raised first. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't remember who the other one was either. But yeah, I don't know if we'll get there or not. I mean, we're already getting to the edge of the, of the next, uh, service so well we'll see what it goes and then we'll you know but definitely want to cover those verses that you want to cover sister diane shabbat shalom uh oh where'd she go did we lose her uh shabbat shalom family. oh there she is <laughs> yeah i can step down and uh just let uh, brother rob go ahead and do what he was going to do i just going to add on to actually what has already gone forth so um my message what i was going to say doesn't really lend anything new so i just wanted to put my two cents in there but we can go ahead and go forward okay yeah, I think I was missing Brother Charles's uh, point. I'm glad you caught that, Brother Rod. Now that you brought that out, I think that I see where his thought was and that where both traits uh, reside in, you know, I guess that's the, this new gender identity kind of crisis that we're finding ourselves in in the society. You know, people confused about who they are and what side they uh, fall on. And just, I, you know, I guess in a sense that this discussion with that, thought in mind, you know, and, and thinking that those things still may reside, you know, that, that might answer some of the questions why some people feel the way they do. You know, if that if those qualities we do find can rise up in situations, uh, whether it be abuse or whatever, that kind of rises those things up and brings causes confusion. I don't know. I've seen that it happen with those close to me, how it affect them when they were abused and how it can change their viewpoints on those aspects. But as far as both uh, carrying both traits, you're right. I do see that in, in, in where it calls, it calls for. I think, you know, we rise up to those occasions that if you're a single father or single mother that has to play both roles, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that you're one or the other opposite of what you what you find yourself uh, to be physically, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and uh, bring your verses out and we'll, we'll cover those real quick and see where we're at when we're done. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to speak to what, to what you said, you know, you know, and go even beyond Charles' question because it doesn't just, you know, rear itself in that idea of the mixing of gender. Um, it, it also renders itself in, you know, like I said, because it's all about behavior and our behavior, you know, 
prisons are filled with with men that are over emotional you know sometimes you know due to the fact that their father wasn't in, in the home teaching them how to be a little bit more self control but watching the attributes of their of their mother that is emotional and they respond that way not that women you know raise criminals that's not what i'm saying i'm saying the attributes of some men you know that, that lose their mind over every little single thing and not have a form of discipline or uh, understanding of self-control in that sense, uh, put them in prisons, <laughs> you know, pulling over and shooting somebody for running you off on the road or stepping on your shoe, you know, those things also happen. You know, there's also a dysfunction in behavior based upon us not properly learning how we should function, you know, those temperaments in men and women, we have instruction on how not to go that route. You know, the fruit of the Ruach are these things, self-control, temperance, you know, all of these things. You know, when we learn those things based upon scripture, we're less likely to be dysfunctional in life, dysfunctional in this world. And that covers everything that is opposite of Yah. You know, not just homosexuality, but just straight sin you know, and us living in it, you know, so I wanted to to make sure that we understood and had a well-rounded idea of behavior based upon our instruction or in spite of instruction. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to read the three passage, the three verses we, we just read from the Greek translation because um, Sister Leticia asked what, um, substance meant. Um, so this whole passage I wanted to read because it kind of clears up any doubt of what's being said in the passage. So it says, um, this is Luke chapter 8, 1 to 3, it says, and it came to pass soon afterwards that he himself also continued to go up and down throughout the city and village making a proclamation as a herald does with formality, gravity, and authority as must be listened to and obeyed and given out the good news of the kingdom of Elohim. And with him, the 12 and certain women who had been healed from spirits that were per per pernicious and from infirmities, married, the one called Magdalene, from whom demons, seven of them, had gone out, and Joanna, wife of Chusa, Herod's overseer, and Susanna, and others, many of them who were of such of a nature that they kept on supplying them with food and other necessities of life out of their own possessions, out of their possessions. So um, all of those things uh, were uh, kind of illuminated on in the, in the Greek translation. So I just wanted to kind of share that to get a view of what's happening here uh, as we read through. So. Hallelujah. You inspired Sister Diane. So that's all, Sister Diane. Shabbat Shalom again. Um, and, and that was perfect. Uh, yeah, Brother Rod and uh, Sister Leticia, and I believe a lot of this conversation earlier spoke on service. You know, it's like, regardless, you know, there is always um, a place to serve in the kingdom. Hallelujah. And it, it doesn't matter your position, you know, what you do, because we're one body, you know, and if if there's a position that's you know something that we're accustomed to the woman doing then she does it to the best of her ability um there's nothing wrong and i this kind of touches with elder rod if a man is a baker um uh, then he shouldn't be a uh, scorn or shame of the fact that he is a baker however if you know and i i know a couple of guys that are bakers they're 
grandmother, <laughs> you know, taught them how to bake one of the best cakes anyone could ever have. And every time there's a funeral in the family, I would hate to use that example, but they can always depend um, um, upon him to bring these delicious cakes. But, you know, in terms of um, Mary Magdalene and these other women that are spoken of here in Luke 8, um, look who they were, you know, look at their past, look at their histories. And once they were transformed, once they repented of their sins, you know, and came into the service of the kingdom, they were used. You know, and Yahuwah used them according to their substance, according to what they could do. You know, they were used, whether it's a wash his clothes, his clothes had to be washed, you know, and, and there were other things, other necessities that he had that had to be taken care of. You know, um, it was brought out that women are nurturers more so than men. How do we know that Yahusha didn't need nurturing? After all, he was a man. You know, he may have needed something. He may have had the sniffles one day, you know, and the woman brought him a tissue, you know, not a Kleenex, but, you know, you know something and say, well, you need to here, take this, wipe the sweat off your brow. Here is your tea. Mary Magdalene was a great woman. She may not have started out that way, but once she once she learned of her sin and had a desire to repent of her sin, Heavenly Father used her mightily, so much so that we're reading about her in this 21st century. Another thing about her is that she became a leader. This Mary Magdalene, women respected her, you know, for what she did. And there is an order of things. You know, there are women that in, 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 for, in the assembly, Hallelujah. In the assembly that other women look up to, you know, for guidance, for nurturing, for understanding how to live as sisters in um, sisters in Yah, you know. So we all serve that purpose. It's like there are other men besides the elders, and there are other men besides the deacon, and there may be other men in the church whom um, men look up to, to them, you know, because of this order. He may not be the head. He may not be the deacon. He just may be a strong man in Yahuwah. And the other brothers will come up to him and say, man, you know, yada, yada, yada. And because of the training that he received, perhaps from the deacon or the elder, he in turn can help the other brothers. And that's how we grow. And it's the same thing for us women. You know, um, um, we look up to, there are certain women that other women will look up to. Well, Sister Diane, I was just wondering, what about this? You know, and if I cannot help her, then I'm going to say, you know, maybe we need to go and talk to sister on up, you know, or maybe we should go and talk to this sister, or maybe we should go and talk to the mother of the church, something of, of this, <laughs> excuse me, my Baptist just came out, but you all know what I mean. That's how we lift one another up. We lift one another up through and within uh, the body of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Go ahead, Brother Ron. Mother, mother of the church. That, 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 <laughs> that's funny how that stuff comes out. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Real. So, <laughs> Sister Diane touched on something that, 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 that I, you know, am going to address uh, during the number study, you know, in regards to, you know, our function, you know, what Yah has us, his mission for us. Um, and getting involved, <laughs> you know, I don't want to get too much into it, but she just kind of really ushered that in. Like the fellowship is more than the elders and the deacon. You know, there's so many things that need to be done. 
that should be done, that can be done. Um, and Yah has something for each and every one of you, you know, in regards to helping the ministry. So I'm going to address that. I'm going to get into that scripturally um, in regards and in relation to what's going on in Numbers 32. So, uh, you know, if you want to hear the continuation, you know, stick around uh, for this afternoon. Praise Yah. It's so interesting how these things seem to fold into each other and complement each other. You know, I, I thought we were going to be way past these three scriptures here. You know, <laughs> and it's taking the whole day. You know, I, I really never would have thought that. I honestly didn't. I had all these other ones ready to go, and we're still stuck on the first three. Uh, Brother JG, Sister Leticia, we might as well, we're about to the end of this. So, hey, brother, yeah. let's continue. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you know, after my wife and brother Rod had brought out those verses, I went and looked into it, uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 3. And, uh, you know, I read out the King James type of a version, but it, lo it looks a, a lot more similar to um, it's saying that, um, and, and I'll just start at the end of the portion of verse 3. It says, and Susanna and others, many, and this is out of the interlinear, many who were and it says ministering, and that word ministering, again, it's like serving, being an attendant to them. And it says out of the means of their own or out of their own possession. Um, and so that was pretty interesting. That word, I, I thought it was interesting because we, we read substance earlier. And, and, I, and I think that's interesting. You know, when you look at what they were doing, um, whatever that can mean, I, I mean, it can mean maybe their, <clears throat> their own you know, food out of their fridge, you know, and, or out of their, it could be their pocket. It could be their, you know, whatever it is, but it's, it's interesting how when you start to serve, you, you go all out and they were going all out. Like they were doing the, everything they could and with that, whatever they had to be that uh, servant to those. Uh, so I just thought that was interesting. Hallelujah. Well, I guess that's kind of what a servant does, you know. They give of themselves. They give of what they what they have, you know. Um, sometimes that's all you have is what you know, whatever's in your pocket, you know, as you said, you know. But yeah, their substance, their their being, their their bank accounts, you know, whatever's in their fridge, you know, whatever they got, they were they were helping to feed and do whatever it is that they were doing to to serve. It, it's a beautiful thing how three verses or three three lines of scripture can contain so much discussion. And I think that it's a relevant discussion this morning because this isn't something that gets talked about much in, in uh, religious circles, if you will. And I think that it's important that we see that the roles of women and how they play in the assemblies, in the kingdom, in the homes, you know, um, very important to the kingdom. So I think that it's important that we see why it is that this is where we settled this morning and how it's gonna continue on into our afternoon study. Sister Diane? Now, one last thing, the question can often be asked, well, what can I do? How can I serve? I don't have an education. I don't have money. You know, what can I do? <laughs> There's a lot. Some of us have time. Some of us have good listening skills. Some of us have vehicles. Some of us have food in our refrigerator where someone else doesn't. Someone may have a hard time getting to the doctor's office, whereas another one is able to take them to uh, their appointment. Someone may not know how to talk to the system, whereas someone else may know how to talk to the system. Someone may not be able to clean up their house properly for whatever reason. Someone enjoys cleaning up another person's house to help them enjoy their home. Some take joy, you know, in doing that. That's serving. 
that's substance. That's substance. That's having what we have to give. It doesn't involve money. You know, it doesn't involve, uh, you know, sitting at some, I don't know, office somewhere serving, you know, it doesn't involve being a lawyer. However, someone may have it, the ability about themselves to help another member of the body find a lawyer or go to a lawyer. These are ways that we can serve. Let us remember the woman with the alabaster jar of oil. That's all she had. She had a jar of oil. What did she do with it? Her service to Yahushua with that oil and anointing his feet was greater, was, was a, a greater service than anyone else in that room. She performed the greatest service. And that oil was not cheap. It wasn't cheap oil. I think in one of our women's studies, we figured out that she paid um, quite a bit of money. And not only that, but it took time to save it up, you know, little by little. So if I have time to talk to a sister that is experiencing whatever, or she's just on my mind, you know, these, th this is how we serve one another. Well, how are you doing today, sister? You were on my mind. Well, if you're on my mind, then that means I'm supposed to check up on you. So how you doing? You know, these are these are the ways we keep the blood flowing, you know, in the body. You know, this is what keeps us alive. Blood keeps us alive. And we know what the blood represents. That's the life, you know, of the body of Yahuwah. And this is how we do it. This is how we do it. And can a woman talk to a, a, a guy? I feel that they can. You know, of course, there's also a protocol with that. But, you know, sometimes men need a female nurturer. Sometimes a female may need something from a guy that a guy could understand. You know, if I'm having problems with my vehicle, and I know that one sister don't know anything about vehicles, but I know this brother does. And I say, hey, brother, you know, yada, yada, because I'm a single woman, you know. Even if I go through his wife and say, well, sister, can you ask brother whatever, you know, if he could, you know, sometimes the brother, the husband can tell the wife and the wife will come back and tell me, you know, but in our love for one another and our earnestness and our integrity with one another, we wouldn't have a problem with saying, oh, is she talking to my husband? Now, I am saying this in a manner of order, okay? We must always keep uh, trust, honor, respect, and order. It, that must always be because Yahuwah is the Elohim of order, period. So anyway, thank you very much. I'm going to stop there before I keep on going. So hallelujah, amen. <laughs> hallelujah, sister. Yeah. I'm going to end with you, Brother J.D., Sister Leticia. You got the final word this morning. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I, I just want to share this with everybody in the assembly because um, I feel like this is what it's come down to if you feel encouraged, if you feel encouraged today to, you know, because this is, I, I just feel so organic, like, man, it's amazing. Um, just encouraged to want to do these type of things for, you know, a part of this assembly. You know, this assembly is definitely... Um, we're a body and there's many, many parts of this body that um, in this in this uh, body here of this assembly of Yuhua that, you know, we need one another. You know, we there's a lot of like sister said, there's a lot of different um, attributes and characteristics and talent that that everybody has. And so, you know. You know, raise up your voice to to the elders. Raise up your voice and to Sister June and, and speak and say, "Hey, you know, I, I want to help out with this, or I want to help out with that," because I think that's what's going to get us stronger as a body. It's for us to do that, and um, so I just want to encourage everybody. If if that's what you feel in your ruach that Yahuwah has put in you today, 
because I feel like this is what's happened organically. And I just want to share that, you know, share my heart because we're going to be a stronger body when we when we do that with within this fellowship, especially. Um, so hallelujah. I just want to share that and uh, say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Hallelujah, brother. Organically, it's, uh, you know, it seems like that's where the flow is. Uh, and I think you've nailed it, you know. I think we need to be of use to each other. You know, I know, I know for certain there's been times where I needed my brother and uh, it, it, it helps when you have somebody to speak to. It's got wise counsel uh, to pray with you, you know, to give you some kind of direction. Same way with the sisters, you know. And I think uh, what you said, Sister Diane, you know, sometimes we feel it's hard to, what can I do? What can I, how can I help, you know? But it's just little simple things of, of just encouragement, uh, prayer, you know. You know, somebody has an issue. We've been talking about this a lot right, lately, Brother Rod. You know, reach out, ask for help, you know, share your situations. I've been doing it a lot lately. And, uh, you know, it's bringing me comfort be able to get responses from everyone and direction as well so praise you all brother rod yeah no i just i just, i'm just amazed sometimes when i watch um you know, who will orchestrate things and i you know you know we look at different reasons things happen you know for the past we're, we're supposed to be teaching numbers chapter 32 three weeks ago you know, one week we went long doing something. One week I was sick. Um, one week uh, you did your testimony. And then today we're talking about serving. <laughs> and today it's going to go into that um, in, in, in terms of not serving. Like, and what that means to Yah. Like, when you have a gift to share and he's telling you and you don't, is actually sin. And we're going to see where it says that in scripture. And we're going to talk about that and how we're going to get a full dose of serving and being help and, 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 and not depending on just three or four people when we have all of these things to offer. So I'm just amazed at what I'm seeing and how it was orchestrated that today we would finally go into it. So praise you Um I'm just excited for what y'all is going to do. I keep telling y'all, y'all wants to do something special with this specific assembly, and uh, we're going to see it happen. Um, we just have to be patient, and we have to make sure that we are listening and our ears are sensitive to hear y'all's voice because we can't get that wrong. Praise y'all. So, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you. Praise y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Beautiful study today, everyone. Thank you for your input. It's definitely uh, took on a direction and a path of its own today. And I, I'm very thankful for that. So praise Yahuwah, may his will be done today. Shabbat shalom, everyone. All righty.